Um, am I good to go? Yeah. Okay. So this session is about smart macro recording and in the initial title I included the Dutch bit because there was still some discussion on which language this would be in. Uh, I figured given the audience that probably English would be better than just Dutch. So there you go. Um, let me start my screen share. Um, there we go. You should be seeing my PowerPoint now. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, great. OK, so um, who am I? So I'm a Dutch guy. I live in the south of the Netherlands. Um, my name is Jan Karel Peters, as you can read. I've been an Excel MVP ever since 2003, which makes me, I think, the four but longest standing current Excel MVP. Um, before my life as an Excel expert, I was a chemical engineer, but ever since 2003, I run my own business doing Excel consulting. Uh, this session is about macro recording, so it's really a very low level, beginner level VBA session. And if we have some time at the end, I will also shortly discuss um, the new Office script and I'll try not to give away too much because the session after me is from Sudi, if I remember correctly, who is going to tell you all about Office scripts. So I'll just give a very, very short intro on that uh, so as not to spoil everything for Sudi. Um, I'm going to switch off my video now because you're probably bored looking at me anyway. There you go, so my second slide. And I'm not very good at PowerPoint and we'll keep PowerPoint to the bare minimum if we can. Um, the first thing to do is show you the file that we're going to work with and the file you can download from the um, come from the website of this um, uh, event. Um, maybe Han can share the, the URL in the chat window or something that would be useful. Uh, so what's this source file about? Um, that I'll talk to you in a minute. Um, I'll talk about activating the developer tab. And then I'll demo recording a macro and talk about absolute and relative recording and then to the nitty gritty details of smart recording. And finally, if there's still time, I'll talk about office script recording. So that's enough PowerPoint for now. Let me get rid of that and go to Excel. So this, here's my file and Imagine you work for a, um, how do you call it in English, um, a call center. And the task you are given is taking up calls, noting the name of the caller, the name of the company, the phone number of the person who called, and then write down some notes. Um, but we also want to keep some call history. So we have a call history worksheet down here. And what needs to be done is record every call as a new row in this call history sheet. So as you can see that the data of the call is sideways as compared to the data in the data entry sheet. And that's just because it's relatively seen as easier to entry data vertically rather than entering data in a row of a table. Also, that gives us gives us room to expand this row a lot so you can actually see what you're entering. So the steps we need to take for this is. Um, we need to copy these cells, control C. Go to the call history, click on A3. Open up the paste special dialog. Transpose our paste and paste values and number formats and click OK. So that's the task we have. I'm going to undo this. Um, to make it easier to work with VBA, it's a good idea to activate the developer tab on your ribbon. So activating a tab on your ribbon is something you can do by right clicking in the, the ribbon. 
like this and I'll zoom in so that you can see this menu and selecting customize ribbon. And then up comes the dialogue and that dialogue has a developer mentioned here in the list of tabs, but it's not checked by default. So we just check this box and click OK. And here we have the developer tab in our ribbon. And that tab has a number of interesting buttons that we'll be using today. The first one is Visual Basic. That actually opens the VBA editor. The second one is Macros, which gives you a list of all macros that are available currently. And the one that's important today is the Record Macro button and the button to use relative references, I'm sorry. So let me look at my scrap list of things I want to discuss, making sure I don't forget anything. So we've activated the developer tab by right clicking on the ribbon, selecting customize and checking the box over here. And now we're ready to record a macro. So let's just record a very simple macro. And I'm going to click the record macro button. And it comes up with a dialogue. And the first thing it asks us for is the name of the macro. So I'm just making this up as we go. And for macro names, there are some simple rules. Um, one of them is that a macro name cannot contain any spaces. Uh, another one is that it cannot start with anything other than um, letters. So you cannot start a macro with a digit. Um, then the next item in this dialog is the shortcut key that you might define to call the macro. Uh, you might, for example, um, use Control S, which is a really bad idea. Uh, I once had a mac. Uh, uh, I, I once got a, a file from a customer who assigned Control S to a macro that did all sorts of um, dangerous stuff to the file. Um, and one problem that VBA code has is that if you execute it, it will empty your undo stack. Uh, so whatever a macro does is something that you cannot undo. Um, being an Excel developer, my habit is to hit Control S prior to actually running any macro. And you can imagine what happened. I lost all my changes. So the next drop down is the place where Excel is going to put the macro that's going to be recorded. So I'm going to store this macro in either my personal macro workbook, which is a special file that Excel will automatically create for you. It's called personal.xlsb. Or you can select new workbook and Excel will insert an empty new workbook into which the macro is going to be recorded. And then finally, this workbook. So that's the workbook we're currently looking at. So when would you choose which? Um, if the macro you're going to record is only going to be used in this workbook, then this workbook is your choice. If you're recording a macro that's going to be used in maybe more than one file, you might choose personal macro workbook. So if it's a utility macro like maybe setting um, footers or headers or on the page setup, you might record that into your personal macro workbook. So we'll leave that at this workbook. And by the way, this choice is going to be remembered by Excel. So if you choose personal macro workbook and click OK, next time you run the macro recorder, it will still be at personal workbook personal macro workbook. So always double check whether the location where the macro is going to be recorded is the one that you actually want to record into. Finally, we need to add a, well, we can add a description, it's not mandatory. So let's just add some dummy description just so you can see where that goes once we've done recording the macro. And I'll zoom out now, click OK. And you, if, if you looked at here, you see that the icon that said macro recorder has changed to a stop button here. 
And in fact, for your convenience, that button is also down here in the status bar all the way on the left. That's also where the macro recorder button lives if you haven't record, started the recording yet. So let's record just entering my name in F2. I'll just do my first name. And that's all for now. I'll just hit the stop recording button here. And I'm going to the VBA editor. And maximize this for now. So where did that macro go? Um, all over to the left here, we have what's called the Project Explorer. If this isn't visible, you go to the View menu and you make sure you select Project Explorer. But since it's visible now, I'll just leave it there. And macros that you record always are recorded into modules. So we expand modules and lo and behold, we have a module one here, which we can double click. And there's our macro. So the description I typed, dummy description, is here. And the keyboard shortcut that I gave it, Control S, is also noted here as a comment. And all the macro does is select range F2 and write my name into it. So that's what the range F2.select stands for and act as cell dot formula R1C1 equals Giancaro is just VBA mumbo jumbo for it. Put Giancaro into the formula R1C1 property of range F2. So let's record another macro. I'm going to close the editor and I'm going to record another macro and let's call it another macro this time without a typo. I'm not going to assign a shortcut key this time. I'm just going to click OK. This time I'm going to turn on use relative references. And I'm going to click two cells down like this and just enter my initials. And let's stop that recorder just now. OK, let's look at what we've done. I'm going to I'll show you another step of getting to your macros. You can click the macros button here. And here you see a list of all macros that are available currently. And since I recorded another macro, I'm going there and I don't want to run it. I want to see it, so I'll just click edit. And all that this edit button does is open the VBA editor and get take you to that another macro routine. So let me click edit here. And there you are. And this is a good moment to compare these two macros. So the second line in each of them, this one, it's more or less the same. It's just that I entered something different into the cell. The first one is very different. And I'll demonstrate what happens with this shortly. So the first, the first marker I recorded literally selects cell F2, but the second one has some code that says active cell dot offset two comma zero. What that means is it takes whatever cell we're in and then offsets it by two rows, that's the two over here, and zero columns. And if I start typing inside the code, Excel actually, or the VBA editor, I must say, actually shows me what these numbers mean. So two is the row offset and it bolts it here, and zero is the column offset. So if, for example, I was in, ray in cell F2, this offset 2 comma 0 should take me to cell F4. And I'm not sure what the range A1 is for or why it records it. Um, you could even delete it. It will do exactly the same. So let's see what this means in practice. I'm going to empty these two cells. And suppose I am here. And I now run my first macro, which is some dummy macro. And you will see, watch this space here, my name appear in F2. And I'll click on this cell again and now run the other one. 
another macro. And as you see, my name now appears two cells down from whatever cell I used to be in. So if I click this cell and run that macro, it'll come here. If I click that cell and run that macro, so my macro has become relative to the position that I'm currently in. So that's an important difference to remember. So if you put turn on relative references, everything's going to be recorded relative to your current starting position. The fun thing is this, that you can change this setting during the course of recording your macro. Let me check my short list of what I intended to talk about. Yes, done that bit, done that bit. So now it's time to do my smart recording stuff. I think I'm moving slightly faster than I expected, but that's no big deal. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in and Han will tell me that someone's asked a question. Uh, yeah, smart recording. So let's get rid of this file. I'll just reopen it. There it is. So one thing I always advise my customers when I train them on VBA is if you're about to record a macro, it's a good idea to list the steps that you are uh, intending to record. Uh, another advice is if you start recording a macro, it's a good idea to put your Excel and your VBA editor next to each other. So we'll do that. I'm going to drag my Excel window to the left until it changes size like that. And I'm going to ask Windows to put the VBA editor to the right. So there you go, that's good. And now we're going to start the macro recorder. And again, um, it's a good idea to write down your exact steps. So let's let's just practice shortly without actually recording anything. So we're going to copy my call information, control C. Look at the moving ants who, long, who no longer seem to move today. Um, I click on call history. I'm going to my Last filled cell, which if you use the keyboard is control and the down arrow. Then I move one cell down, which is another down arrow. And then I want to paste special, which is on the home tab. Paste special. I want it to paste the values and the number formats, and I want it to transpose my original information. If I don't paste values and number formats, but just values, this is what you get. You get a, a, a decimal number rather than the date and time. So I don't want that. I want to paste special values and number formats. So that's just to get the date and time right. And I want to transpose. Once I've pasted special and transposed, I want to go back to the form sheet I want to empty my form, delete, and then I want to select cell C4 so I'm ready to register my next call. I'm going to undo this so I just still have some information in there. Oh, and by the way, there's some trickery going on here because suppose my call history is still empty. So let me clear this. What happens if I hit control down arrow? I get taken to cell 1,048,576. And if I try and press down once more, nothing's going to happen because I'll just stay where I am. And if I now do the pay special, my data is going to end up in the last row of the spreadsheet, which is not good. So how do I ensure that I always end up one row beneath the last field cell, regardless or whether my table actually contains any data or not. The trick I've learned in my trade is that if you start from the bottom, so make sure we run 1,048,000 something and then do a control up arrow like this, 
and then just one down arrow, I'm at the right place. So if there's something in here like JKP, and I start from the bottom, control up arrow like this, and one cell down, I'm on my first empty row of data. Okay, so I've taken I've taken the notes, I've written all that down all steps. So let's start my recording. We're here. Um, oh yes, by the way, what macro recorder does it, it takes all steps literally. Uh, perhaps you recall the macro that I recorded just now. It didn't record on which worksheet we are. So one trick to do so to make sure that we're always on the right sheet when we start recording is to explicitly go to that sheet during the recording. So the trick I use is I'll start from the call history sheet this time and then I'll launch my macro recorder. So let's start a recorder. I'll call this macro um, copy to history. So notice a two in there, that's allowed. As long as it's not the first character in the name, that's okay. Log this call to the history sheet. The call history sheet to be precise. Uh, by the way, I try to name this sheet history, but that's a name that is reserved by Excel. So you cannot have a, a worksheet named history. Try it for yourself when you see Excel give you an error message. So we're logging a call to the call history sheet and I'll click OK here. And as you can see, the module has been added to my VBA editor already. So I can expand modules and I can just open it and look at what is already recorded. And all it has done is record that I wanted a macro called copy to history. And this is my entire macro with just some comments in between. Anything I do on the Excel side is going to be recorded immediately prior to this end sub here. So watch the end sub go down and the statements get added just above it. Uh, at this moment, I'm going to double check whether my macro recorder is on absolute references. It's not, so I'm going to turn it into absolute references. And this is the time to go to my form sheet. Look, we haven't recorded anything yet. So I'm clicking on form. And there you go, it recorded that we selected the form sheet. So now, at least if I run this macro again, it will first go to the form sheet before doing anything else. So what was our next step? Our next step was to copy this range. So I'm just going to select these cells and look what happens in my macro. It, rec it records selecting those cells. Um, the interesting thing is that X, the macro recorder is actually quite smart because if I change the selection, notice that last line here, it's going to update. So as long as I don't do anything else than selecting cells, it's not going to record all these selection of cells here. So I'm going to select the proper cells again. And it updates it to the area I want it to have. And I'm going to hit copy, home, copy. And as you can see, it recorded selection.copy. So now it's time to go to my call history sheet. As you can see, sheets call history.select, selected the sheet. And I'm going to hit that control down arrow now because I want to get to the end of my sheet. And watch what happened. It's actually recorded something that is relative to where I started. It just says, okay, from wherever I was, I hit control down arrow. So that's what this means. And XL down just means control down arrow or hit the end button on your keyboard and then the down arrow key on your keyboard. So this is not good enough because if, for example, there was some data at the top of my table in row two, I would have ended up on range on cell A2 of my spreadsheet, and that's not where I want to be. So um, I, I kind of 
figured on how am I going to make sure that this macro recorder is going to actually record that is in this cell. And the trick I discovered is that it's good enough to just click on that cell once, or maybe you could also just click the down arrow once more. So now I have it where I want it to be because this is going to select that last cell of the spreadsheet regardless of whatever other statements were there prior to that one. For example, this one. The interesting thing is that if you're recording a macro and you see your macro recorder record something you don't like, you can simply delete it from the currently recording macro. So this selection.endExcelDown.select can just be deleted by hitting the Del key, and I'm just going to backspace this entire statement. There you go. So now I am at cell A1,048,576. And I'm going to now turn on relative references because as of here, I want to relatively record. And I'm going to hit control up arrow once. Control up arrow. There we go. And it recorded very much the same as it did when I hit control down arrow, but this time I like it to be that way. So I'm going to leave it in there and I'm going to hit the down arrow key once. Recording that active cell that offset one comma zero that looks very familiar to you probably because it looks very much the same as when I recorded my relative macro earlier. So there we are, we're ready to paste on an empty line, so I'm going to the Home tab, click on Paste Special, Values and Number Formats. I'm going to Transpose and I'm going to click OK. And there you see it, it's actually recorded selection dot paste special. Paste what? Values and Number Formats. Um, let me scroll to the right a little bit. The operation was XL none. The operation are things like add or subtract, whether or not to skip blanks and whether or not to transpose. We're almost done here. The steps we need to take now is go back to our form sheet. Select the orange cells here. Ah, and look what happened here. I forgot to actually turn off relative recording. So let's go back to developer. Turn this off. Select these cells again. So this time it literally selects them. Uh, I could even get rid of this statement, so let's do that. And what I wanted to do was hit the Del key. So let's delete this and finally select cell C4 to be ready for our new input. There you go. So that's our entire macro. Let's stop recording. So suppose we forgot to step in our recording. Suppose we forgot to actually select range C4. Um, I'm going to undo this. Rec no, I'm not going to undo this recording. Suppose this statement's not there and you don't actually know how to select a cell in VBA. You've never programmed in VBA before. Can we continue recording this macro? No, we cannot but we can always record a new one and then copy whatever it um, the macro recorder produced and paste it into our existing macro. So, so let's do that. So I'm going to, to start the macro recorder again. Additional step, I'll call this one and I'll just click OK. Um, I'll make sure that not relative reference is off and I'll just click on cell C4. That's the only step I needed. I'll stop recording. And given that the VBA editor is just a text editor, I can just cut this control X, enter here and paste control V. Make sure this is on the same column and then get rid of the original macro that's now empty like this. So that's how you add steps to your macro. If you forgot something during your recording, you just record a new macro, uh, copy the steps that are in there, paste them under the existing code that you have just above the end sub, 
and then you can get rid of the, the newly recorded macro that is there. So we've recorded a macro. Now it's time to actually test whether the macro does what it says on the tin. So let me enter a calling name. My initials, the company is JKP-ADS. That's my company name. I'll make up a phone number and some new note entered. And line two as well. So this is ready to um, be pasted onto the call history sheet. So let's run our macro. Um, you just, just click the macro button or press Alt F8 like it says here, Alt F8. If you use Excel a lot, it's a good idea to memorize those keyboard short, shortcuts because it makes your work in Excel a lot more efficient. So copy history and it is really tempting to now just click run. But remember what I said earlier on the presentation, if you run a macro that makes any change to your spreadsheet, you lose all of your undo stack. So our current undo stack is this is like this long. As soon as I've run my macro, it'll be empty. Um, so it's always a good idea to just press save just before running the macro. I'm not going to because I don't want to save this workbook as I'm going to overwrite my current um, material. So let's Alt F8, copy to history. And what should be happening is it will copy this, it will add it here, and it will go back, empty these cells, select this cell. Let's try Alt F8. Click run, blink your eyes and it'll be gone. And looky here, my entry screen is empty. I have selected cell C4 to enter my new, call, new caller name. And let's look at call history. Lo and behold, my new information, my caller name, the company name, the number I made up, and then this uh, comment is here too. Um, I haven't formatted this column to uh, allow wrapped text, otherwise it was how this would have wrapped into two lines, but you get the idea. So whereas calling, pressing Alt F8 and then clicking Run is convenient enough, um, if I have more than just one macro, like 10 of them or 20, this is not very convenient when you're entering data. So we need a quicker way to just call this macro. And one of them is that just put a button on the sheet. So on the Developer tab, there's this Insert button. And the insert button gives us two sets of what we call controls. There are the form controls and the ActiveX controls. Um, I use the form, I always use the form controls. I call them the simple but effective controls. Um, these are simpler to use than these ones, but the ActiveX controls have more options. You have more formatting options. Options you can actually use multiple different types of macros to respond to ActiveX controls. For example, you can hover your mouse over the control and, it, and have it respond to something like change color. But ActiveX controls are fraught with problems. For example, changing their position if you save the file. And finally, if you have colleagues who are using Mac Excel, ActiveX controls will not work. So if you're developing for more than one version of Excel, especially for Mac versions of Excel, stick to the form controls. So there you go. That's enough about these. I'm going to click the button here. And now what Excel expects me to do is just draw the button on the screen. So I'm going to drag and I'm going to have it about this size. And as soon as I let go, Excel pops up this mess, this box. And this box is actually asking me if I want to um, assign a macro to the button. So that's a good moment to do that right now. And if I haven't actually recorded a macro, I can do so now. But I'm just going to pick my already recorded macro here and I'm going to click OK. Zoom out first, click OK, and there's my button. 
So final step is to actually edit the text on the caption of the button so that we can make it more description descriptive. Copy call to history. That's good enough. So there you go. So let's try this again. JKP, JKP ADS, phone number, another bogus number, another call again. And let's see if our button works. Copy call to history. There you go. Something happened because it empties it. And my call history now has my additional call. So there you go. All good to go. Ready to use. So let's study this VBA code shortly and see what we can do to improve this because um, recording the macro recorder is relatively smart as you saw that it just updated this section here when we were moving our selection, but it's still very inefficient code. For example, um, using this selection.copy is super fluid because we can directly tell VBA that we want to have range C2 to C7 copied. Actually, selecting the form sheet is not necessary either. We can just um, directly write sheets.form range C2 to C7 copy. <clears throat> so the same goes for this bit. We can use sheets call history dot range a one million something dot end Excel up and offset that by one and not select it, but do the pay special directly like this. Pay special values and number formats. If we uh, if we omit the operation, it's going to be defaulted to none. If we skip blanks and omit that, it's going to default to false. And so we only need this bit. And finally, we want to clear range C4 to C7. So we can just, oh, keyboard error on this side, do the clear contents here. And I happen to know that this statement over here, this application.cut copy mode, which is the VBA jargon for emptying the clipboard, is super fluid because as soon as you clear cells, it gets emptied anyway. So we can omit that as well, like this. And finally, selecting range C4 is sufficient. We don't need to select sheet form first because if we look at this code, we have not selected any sheets in the meantime. So when we run this code, let me put the VBA editor back into half screen. When we start this code, we are already on the form sheet. So if we run this code, it's going to copy range C2 to C7. It's going to do the paste special on the other sheet, and then it's going to clear this area. So we haven't switched sheet anywhere. We're still on sheet form. So we can just do the range C4.select and we'll be here. Let me prove that to you. So another JKP, oh, it's not a good idea to start typing without changing the application. Another JKP, ADS, my company name. Uh, that's when I get really angry. Let me just type in numbers there. And this is my last entry in this session here. And let me, so now the fun thing is clicking call to history, copy call to history uh, with a macro that I just changed without any testing. And let's just pray that nothing silly is going to happen like a runtime error. Now, copy call to history, click. It has emptied my cells here. It has selected C4. So let's see what happened on the call history sheet. And indeed it has entered a fourth line on the call history sheet too. And let me double check. It has my last entry line here, so we're good to go. 
So let's trace back here for a bit. As you can see, we now have four lines of code, whereas when we started, and I can undo all of this, all of my changes, well, it, it's limited in the undo stack. So selection.copy, selection. Yeah. So this was my original macro, and that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen lines of code. I've reduced that to just four. So macro recorder is a bit verbose, uh, and you can shorten all of that into four lines, as you see saw me doing. Okay, so so that's smart recording. So to recap. Um, and I didn't actually write down the recap in a sheet, so I'll just do that by heart. If you're about to record a macro, practice. So practice the steps that your macro needs to do. Write them down on a sheet of paper or on a PowerPoint presentation or just in Excel, whatever medium you prefer. And then um, try them first before actually recording the macro. But even so, if you make a mistake, and if you make sure that you have that VBA recorder, um, I'm sorry, that VBA editor, why doesn't it want to? Oh, I don't like Windows sometimes, but this is why I wanted it to go. So um, it's a good idea to put your VBA editor next to your Excel window so that you can see what it's recording. Um, if it records something that you don't like, you can just delete it from the recorded code, maybe turn on relative references if that's the fix, or maybe retrace your step and do it again. Uh, it just makes your life easier. So um, having done all your steps, then start your macro recorder like this, fill out the form, choose where to put the macro, maybe add a comments, but you can always add your comments later on manually inside the recorded code if you forgot about it, and then do your steps. Um, finally, if you're happy with the recorded code, uh, make sure you test it. So first save your work because you cannot undo what the macro recorder or the macro does. Then um, try your real recorded code. And if you're happy with it, then save again. Maybe add a button to the sheet and attach the macro to it so you can easily access it. So those are the steps to actually smartly record a macro. And I especially like the step of having Excel and the VBA editor next to each other or maybe on two different screens if you have them, because that makes your life a whole lot easier. Um, so that being said, let me see where we are. Recording a macro, I did all of the steps. Uh, yes, I'm ready to take questions and if there are no questions I'm going to spend some minutes on office scripts if I may. So let me put this on questions. If there are no questions, I'll just proceed with my office script recording, if that's OK. And I'll just keep it short. Because Sudi is going to come in the next session and he's going to talk about office scripts a lot more, so I'll just keep it very short. OK, let me kill PowerPoint again. Get rid of Excel desktop for now. So office scripts. Um, so Office Scripts is about recording code in Excel online. 
Uh, as you probably know, VBA macros do not work if you are opening an Excel file in Excel or Line or directly in Microsoft Teams, which is, by the way, just Excel online behind the scenes. Um, but um, recently, um, uh, Microsoft added something called Office Scripts, and it's something that needs to be turned on in the admin area of Office 365. So if you are in a larger organization, you must try and get your IT department to switch that option on for you. So I am my own organization, so I'm also the IT department, which is quite convenient because I've already turned that on. And what that means is if I open up a file from my OneDrive in my browser, I have a new type, a new tab on the rim called Automate. And on that tab, and you, you'll see this file looks familiar. It has a record actions button and it has a list of scripts. So these are called office scripts. And so let me just record something. I'll show you what it is. I'm going to record a action. And I'm just going to record copying this. Control C. Going to my call history. Clicking A3 over here. Let me control down arrow two and control up arrow and one arrow down. And as you look at the right, it says this action is not yet recordable. So that's kind of a pity because apparently um, there's also no button here that says relative recording. So that's uh, something that we are waiting for to happen. But OK, let's just click on A3 and go to the home tab. Click on the paste drop down here. And there's also no paste transpose values. You can either paste values or paste transpose. So the user interface is, is slightly lacking here to actually precisely do what I wanted in the previous macro recorder. But let me just paste transpose here like that. Problem with the paste transpose here is that it actually pasted the formula that I had in cell um, C3, the now function. And I don't want it to put the now function here because then next time I calculate the workbook, my um, my call log is going to change all of the dates. OK, so I'm, re I'm more or less happy with what, what the recording did. Also, it, it pasted also all of the formatting rather than just values and number formats. So I'm not really pleased with this either, but OK, let's go with the flow and click stop. And the first thing it does is it asks for a name. So this is kind of the reverse order that we had in the VBA macro recording. Um, in here, it asks for a name after we finished recording, which is fine. It doesn't make much of a difference. Um, so let's just do some silly name, whatever, test. One, two, three, four, and click save. And let's just have a quick look. There you go. So here are the steps. So what did it do? Um, so it told me that it, it actually recorded and I want something with the worksheet called call history and it's actually made up a variable name by itself. Um, it also stored the current sheet that I'm on, which is get active worksheet. And then for some reason, this is all crammed into one statement. It takes cell A3, oh, get out of the way, cell A3, and then um, takes the range C2 to C7 and pastes it into cell A3. So the location where it does the paste is more or less hard coded here. So this needs some work before I can actually use this script. Um, I have to go in and manually edit this to make it work. And I did that prior to this session. So let me show you what it would look like if you have actually edited the recording. And it kind of becomes a bit larger, but that's just because I added much of, a lot of a lot of comments here. So I'm getting rid of all my comments so you can actually see a bit better what happens. So 
So um, it's kind of difficult to do the end arrow down and then end arrow up, but maybe Sudi can um, make a comment on that in the next session if he's listening in. Um, what I did here was I'm actually using the get used range. So, and then I'm going to get the last cell of that used range in column A, and I'm then going one cell down. So I'm actually taking this area here then looking at column A, that's the intersection, then going to the last cell of that, which contains anything, and then going one cell down. And that's where I'm doing my paste. And then I'm doing my paste in two steps. So I'm first pasting values, and I had to actually look at what is available here. I just hit the period here, and it gives me a list of items that I can do. And I kind of guessed that values is the one I need. And then I repeated the whole bit here without the offset because I've already pasted my values here. And then um, rather than pasting values, I'm pasting the formats here. So that's my recorded macro edited or not. It's not a macro actually, it's called a, an office script. Uh, enough about office scripts. I'm not going to tell you everything Sudi is going to tell you. Um, and I'm ready for questions if there are any. Otherwise, I think I'm ready for the um, probably required last slides, as they say, which is this one. So please fill out my e the evaluation form. If you liked what I said, let me know. If you didn't, let me know as well. If you know where to improve, just leave a comment or maybe if you want to learn more, oh, oh, by the way, you've seen this one, so I'm going to skip that one, and Sudi will probably show it a bit longer because he's from Microsoft Excel team. Um, if you have any questions after the fact or want to learn more, uh, just pop me an email at info at jkp-ads.com. Visit my website, jkp-ads.com. If you want to learn, there's lots of articles on VBA there. And if you like, you can connect, find me on LinkedIn, connect with me, uh, maybe mention in your comment that you visited this uh, this event and um, I'll certainly accept your invitation. Uh, final last words, words, thank you some product and Microsoft for organizing this event. Great job guys and thanks a lot. Thank you, Yankar. Welcome back everyone. Yankar um, has introduced our next session to be office script from Suhi, Nancy and Danny, but we will have a five minute break before the session starts, so take a rest. <laughs>